Joan, we got to behave because they record us and we're like that you. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> I think it's good. Well, Byron, whenever you're ready to get started, by all means. Please, please, ready. Okay. So go ahead and uh, crank up the machine. Oh, and you guys are good to go. I'm you're cranked. Yep. And you have a live mic, so you are on right now. <laughs> oh, okay. Thank you. Um, it's good to see all of you again tonight on this dreary Monday night. Day before election, so make sure you all go out and vote tomorrow and do your civic duty. I'm going to not be sitting tonight. Plenty is that going to be okay? That's I'd fine. Wander yeah. around. That's wandering. Okay, I won't wander out there, but I'll okay. wander out there. That's good. Um, tonight we're going to talk about getting, you know, your seeds ordered and starting seeds, uh, which can be a real headache. Um, I know um, with getting plants and everything, I was looking for different herbs and things in the box stores. Things have more than doubled in price over last year. Little pots, $4.98. So be prepared for a single pot where last year they were around three dollars five dollars this year so seeds are the same way if you looked in the seed catalog sharon i know you bought a couple of them along and uh seeds i don't know how expensive i haven't looked because i've gone and to uh a company that they got little stores so i have what some of the seeds already, they've gone up big time also in the price. Uh, so if you're gonna order, don't over order um, because, you know, we all know how long seeds last uh, in plenty shaking her head and back. <laughs> some of them last much longer than others. What about you know? tomatoes? Because we started some tomato seeds and one one section didn't even come up, and I said, my husband did. Were they last year's seeds? He's Three to four years, tomato really? seeds should be viable. Okay. The big ones that don't last are sweet corn, lettuce, onions. Oh. If you plant onion seeds, you know, um, peppers mm -hmm. generally don't do real well keeping more than one to two years at most. Uh, onions, if you plant onions, I don't know if any of you have done them from seed. Um, generally, one year, get new seeds because they're not going to last. Um, your the germination rate will probably drop 70% um, you know, with the onion seeds. Um, <clears throat> the ones I keep the most, uh, broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage seeds, you know, whatever. How many of you actually start your seeds from scratch, you know, your plants? Not a lot of you. Well, I'm surprised. <laughs> you, better, you better start considering it with the price of what plants are going to be. And... Um, Starting seeds can be fairly easy. I got, I got all of my, a bunch of my plants started. Uh, I, tomatoes are not up yet. Peppers are starting to get their second leaf already um, and are doing much better than I thought they would because uh, I have all old seed. I didn't buy any new seed this year. I was, my wife said, you're not buying anything more. Use what you have. So, um, okay, starting seeds, some of the basic things, if you're going to start, uh, how many of you know what this is? 
or what you can use that for. Um, I start all my seeds in something like this. And this is the type of germinating soil. I'll pass this around so you can all see. I won't throw it at you because I would be worried it would pop open and then Glenn will tell me, you got to clean up before you leave all the mess you made. That's a germinating mix. It's very fine. Uh, uh, soil is mixed. There's no soil in there whatsoever. And it's... How many of you know what this is? Perlite. Perlite. And what does perlite do? Keeps the soil loose. Loose and moisture retention. So, um, and you know, it's very good for germination uh, because it'll. Uh, do a lot of that. So you have to mix that yourself. Or you buy it. You That's all purchased. That you, okay, purchased already. That's all already okay. purchased. Now, that's the germinating mix. This is the growing on mix, which is very similar, but this, you can see this has uh, larger particles in than the real pine. And you can get some of it that has bark in it or little wood pieces. Um, this is a commercial variety uh, also that um, I don't like, like a lot of times potting soil. You see potting soil in bags and it's like concrete rock hard. Don't plant any of your seeds in that. Because usually where a lot of that comes from is <clears throat> the sludge from the bottom of a river or something when they dig it out and whatever. And if I use that instead of, because some of those, the growing mix, I usually would get them in a big bale. It's three point something cubic foot bale compressed. And that's about... Um, 20, uh, you know, to thirty dollars a bag for a big bale. Um, and to make it go further, I usually buy some of that junky stuff, you know, from the box stores, and I put a little of that mixed in with um, the other the other potting soil. So once with that. Germinating mix, uh, the real fine stuff. Myron, what was this? The last one. That that's just some commercial, you know, potting soil. It's called. You can see the difference. There's a much more, you know, bark or you know, junk stuff in it. Um, and the germinating mix when you start. You know, get this wet. This is very dry. Usually what I do when I'm going to start planting, I take a container and I put a bunch of this in and I put hot water in it and let it sit for a day or so. And then um, I cover it up, keep the moisture down in the bottom. Uh, so, you know, there's uh, otherwise your moisture is all going to escape. Then there's many different ways of starting uh, with more quantity. Okay, heating table. Um, you know, it's got a thermostat in the bottom, and uh, you can, thank you. You can. Um, Put that in the bottom. I usually tape it down in the bottom and then put the, the germinating soil over the top. Another option is one of these. Does anybody know what this is? Heat mat. You know, mm -hmm. um, years ago, people that had um, water beds. Mm -hmm. Instead of sleeping on them, they would put their plant germination stuff on the waterbed mattress um, because it, 
you know, is a great way, but then you got to sleep on the floor. <laughs> so uh, okay. heating pad, that's one. There are several different kinds that you can use. Here's, here's another one that's a little bigger. And a lot of the, uh, I was over in Manitowoc at some of the bigger box stores, and they all have these. They're all on their shelf. I went up to look on Saturday. I was over there, and you know, this one tends to be a little wider. Um, and you know, they're all, um, if you like germinating your own stuff or starting, get one of those. It's well worth the investment because they keep for years. Um, they run about 25 bucks. Oh, at 10, least 10 by yeah. 20, most of yep. the size and sizes. And what I do is, Joan, can I borrow that a minute? What I usually do, make sure you put it on something where you're not going to ruin your tabletop. Um, I started some of mine in the house, and my wife said, you better not have that on the kitchen table because you're going to bubble up, you know, the, so I have it on another board. And usually what I do, I just do that. And put the dome over the top. And you can buy these also. You know, it's after a while uh, with light, they all start getting yellowish color. They all kind of deteriorate. Get rid of them then. You know, uh, this is a brand new one. So, um, so you don't put that heat thing in the, in the No, underneath. no, put it right under, underneath. And you can see what I do. I don't like putting the, the thing, the container right on top of the heat mat. I got this extra because then if you get real hot heat, it's not going to dry out all your planting media. Uh, and that's... Another way, some pe some people like these. How many of you use these? <laughs> I hate these. <laughs> Do you know why? Yeah, why did you waste the money and buy them? Why? I said, why did you waste the money and buy them? <laughs> I knew <laughs> you so would be the one to ask. <laughs> Um, yeah. <laughs> show and tell, you know, <laughs> show and tell. Um, I thought I was going to try these once this year of planting, you know, like some whole crops in, like cabbage or whatever, um, because they're nice and deep. The reason why I don't like these is you have to, you got to keep them moist because they'll dry out. And if you leave, it always says plant pot and all. Don't do that. Why? Because the soil will absorb the moisture and this will be dry. And if your roots have not penetrated, they're not going to penetrate. So there it's going to sit. And what's going to happen to your plant? It's going to die. Okay. So if you use this, Cut the sides and kind of peel it off if you can. Um, so it. <clears throat> Byron, when you use that, do you yes. put individuals in there or do you just. You, that's what I did bring, the little inserts. Yeah. <laughs> what I do, if I, I take some pieces of thread. Tape them down on the sides and section the container off. And then I plant in each little square. Like some that I have going at home, I think I have eight different kinds of peppers in one flat like that. Okay. And they're not, uh, you know, they're going to have to be transplanted into a different container because that's going to be, you know, the big, you know, they, you can't even keep growing in there. 
Um, and just to conserve space, I had a plant in all my plants in that type of, I wouldn't have room. When I have a greenhouse, I could do that, but we're just having, you know, stuff in the house. Getting back to the heaters, I've also used rabbit nest box heaters and the heaters for pets. Oh, sure. They work too. Yes, yes. You know, kind of be creative if you got something around. Um, thank you, sir. These, a lot of times, these were used for in <laughs> eat troughs. Hmm. Two door time. For not, you know, so oh, your eaves wouldn't um, freeze up. And the plant people got smart and started using that. Do you plug in multiple ones into a power strip or? You can. You? Okay. Yeah, because you see that's not a three pronger, mm -hmm. it's a single pronger. So, um, but don't overload it that you're you're going to pop your circuits because <laughs> I really don't know how much electricity one of those uses. But so, Judy um, hasn't told you what your electric bill goes up every year. She doesn't. Look at that. <laughs> another another thing is one of these little jobbers. I don't know if any of you use these. Okay, what happens? I didn't bring this along to drink. Okay. And, uh, okay, now just kind of pay attention to um, putting this little plug of platinum. Seed in there? No. What? No, no, there's no seed, seed in there. Oh, no, there's okay. no seed in it. Oh. And, um, but you can, you know, if you're just going to play around with and do, you know, like four of this or four of that, you can waste your money on buying one of these little fancy greenhouses and pay enough for, but, um, I don't. That's what they end up looking like. <clears throat> if, you, if you watch this, you'll see how it starts absorbing the water and they'll, it'll pop up and that's what ends up. Then you put your one seed in there and watch it germinate. So um, if you're doing... Uh, in the bigger flat, use little markers, you know, like this. I do not like wood ones because if you get some disease, they will retain or absorb the disease. These are plastic ones, and if you reuse them, you can sterilize them. How do you sterilize them? A drop or two of bleach and some water and put them in there, wipe them off, clean them up, let them dry, and they're good to go for the next year. But mark on here and use uh, one of the, the markers I'm blanking. Wax marker. Oh, yeah. Oh, clean off. No, no, don't use a wax marker. No. Because no. it'll wipe off. It'll, it'll wipe off. Well, it's hard to this. clean off. <clears throat> Well, yes, but if you, a permanent marker, and that's what I use, and then you just got to use them again next year oh, okay. uh, for the same thing. So, and they come in many different colors. They used to be like a box of those of a thousand. I think it was twenty some dollars. I just checked at a wholesaler open house. They're over. Fifty-five dollars a box of purple. For these discs, no, 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 the markers, the markers, they've gotten very expensive. Yeah, <laughs> very like everything else. Um, <clears throat> you can you can see, you know, it's not doing much yet. But if it was warm water. That would go much quicker. Okay. Right out, show you. By the how much do these little discs? 
I have no idea. You can buy the little disc. You can buy in a box. That and I think there's about thirty of them that come in there. Sometimes they're not real easy to find if you use them. And when you see them, you know you got to snatch them up because they'll disappear fairly quickly. Because some people swear by using them. Like I said. I plant too much. They would work, but then don't reuse them. Oh, Throw them out. Okay. Sure, popsicle sticks, you know, but uh, uh, yeah. it depends how many germs you have in your mouth after you're done. <laughs> <laughs> These are also some examples of soil test uh, kits that you can get. Um, how many? I know what I forgot. How many days do you have? Does, does the disc hold water? How long? Yeah. Oh, you gotta you gotta add re add water once you plant and the plant yeah. comes up every day. Every no, no. Then it's gonna be too moist yeah. and you're gonna get dry rot. You know they'll rot off on you because it'll be way too wet. <laughs> Joan, you're awful quiet. You're supposed to be helping me I'm do this. Thinking when you plant something in that, what you got in that glass, yeah. and the plant comes up and it gets roots, are they able to get out of that netting? Yes, they are. Yes, this is like peat moss. Okay. You'll see when the bag. Don't be afraid to open that up and feel it. You know, I just put it in there so. I figured somebody would be smart to squeeze it and they would have to be all wet and they, they wouldn't be happy with me. But you can see how this is starting to um, see how it's kind of expanded from, you know, from that. Another thing after your plants are up. You have to give them a good light source. That's the big trick with a lot of this. And I invested in two of these last year. And uh, they're expensive, but uh, I won't hold them up and shine at you because they're LEDs and you can. Um, and the neat thing with this is. It provides three different colors of light. So it's, see, it's bright, isn't it? Yeah, yeah those are the three. Um, is one light brighter than the other? Yeah, is it a color? Well, the blue, the blue is used for uh, vegetative growth. The red is for blossoming, flowering. So if you plant petunias or geraniums, under that, the red, that is going to stimulate your, your process. And the other color, the third one, is kind of a mix of all three, of all two, the blue. And, you know, I would turn it on and hold it up, but you'll roll right. like this because, and that's the problem with LED bulbs. Uh, they're, they're much better than I used to have all shop lights. And with two bulbs in, if you you can still do that, but I think, like I said last week, use a warm bulb and a cool bulb because then you're going to get more of the full light spectrum. And I have mine in a in a dark room, so you don't have any sunlight at all because yep. they're going to go towards the sunlight. Yeah. Well, I have one on our kitchen table in the east, and it faces the east, and I the ones that are starting now um and i have a light that goes over the top of them it's on the stand and and whatever but you know um so did every did this go around did everybody mm -hmm. see yeah. this with um how it's you know swelling up <coughs> yeah the light is very very important to um your plant growth and whatever and like she said, if you got to buy a window, the plants are going to grow and they'll stretch to get you know, like they want to go to that light. 
um, and they're going to get tall and spindly, and then you'll have problems with it. So, you know, I, I found last year that that is an excellent source. I also got a couple tubes that are LED, and it's a one light um, tube, and it it does very well also. Uh, the old shop lights, you know, you can get them for 10 bucks and then buy the tubes. After a couple of years, get rid of the tubes because, you know, they've lost their effectiveness. A lot of people say, well, you got to have those, you know, expensive grow bulbs. Don't waste your money on that. You know, <laughs> you can do the same thing with the light spectrum with a cool and a warm bulb. Um, and that's basically in people, you know, it's market teacher, they're there to make money. But, um, but if you want to make a good investment, get this. It's, you know, I love these. Um, and you can find them. Yeah, um, some of the bigger, you know, hardware type stores, um, like like Menards, Home Depot. Um, I didn't check if Fleet Farm had them. I didn't see any there. Um, but the same with the the heat maps. Um, you got to kind of shop around. Don't the seed catalogs have them? <laughs> you're going to pay triple to quadruple the price of driving to the store and buying one. So um, I think I paid $49.99. Uh, you know, for their expensive. Um, but LED bulbs last you long time. Um, and there are a lot of uh, commercial greenhouses have gone to all, you know, LED bulbs. You drive past some of the greenhouses when it gets to the springtime. I'll warn you, it's not. <laughs> uh, um, the commercial greenhouses, you will see that they have a lot of, you know, the uh, lights and they have the big dome lights you know that are the same thing halogen lights and but they're mainly all red because they promote the blossoming like we talked about last week where a lot of box stores spray their plants with growth retardant to stimulate blossoming and to keep them short and stocky so um just uh, looking at the soil test kits kind of it it's not as valuable as an original if you send soil in with doing a uh, soil test, but it'll give you the basics of, you know, kind of what um, you're looking for and what kind of, uh, if you're into fertilizing, you know, it'll kind of tell you, um, you know, what to do and what not to do. They have those also at like Fleet Farm, Home Depot, Menards because I saw them all on Saturday, uh, but they don't have a lot with stock. They got two foot um, packs of four of the grow lights. They're two foot long, they're $39.99, and their four foot, four pack are $52.98. For just a grow light? For just the replacement light. Light bulb. The light bulb. Oh. The bulb itself. And you could probably go to any of the bigger, you know, Menards, Home Depot, Lowe's, any of them, and probably get them for a third of that cost. And then you're going to have shipping on top of that, yeah. Uh, this, this you can get from the young store in Appleton. Yeah. You can order from them, and then they can bring it there. Yep. If yep. they have it in their warehouse yeah. stock. Right, right. Yeah, they don't have them at the store. You've got to pre-order them. For the Appleton store. Okay, some of that they did have there. Yeah, okay, because when I was there, they didn't okay. have the, the bulbs. I didn't see any bulbs there. Yeah, I remember but you can find them much them. cheaper at some of the other stores. You know, shop around. 
you know, uh, most of the group is here, all women, and you all like to shop. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're no different than my wife, she came home tonight with bags and stuff. I said, no wonder you were gone half the afternoon. Um, so, yeah, shop around with that. Uh, because it's, and then watch for sale flyers, go online and look um, when they have, you know, because I think those were listed as $50 last year. I think I might have got them for $10 a um, you know, for 39 So yeah, shop around, look for, you know, stuff like that. So how many of those can you do with, for a flat? <laughs> I mean, four, five, three lights. Yeah, I use one flap under there. The flap that was going yeah. around, I put that under. Okay. And then when so the I'm saying, if you got six flats, can you get, cover more than one? Yes. Or? What I do when they're up and they're a little bit taller, I put two of those lights <laughs> very close to each other. And yeah, I, you know, when I start them they're this way under that light and then i switch them and run them the other way because i can get three versus two well, so, like how much you can cheat to get <laughs> you, you one can for how you, many flats you can you can and then next week it's going to be 60 so what do you do you get one of those little mini greenhouses i was going to bring that along and I thought, well, that's in a box. You can get that little mini greenhouse if it gets nice outside. You can start putting stuff out there. Um, so what do you do, you know, talking about putting plants out? Um, you got to see the water is almost completely gone of what I had in there. And, uh, yeah, it's really... A lot of water and moisture in there. <clears throat> um, with, yeah, with the lights, make sure they have enough light. And then once your plants are all up, don't let this plugged in because it's going to dry everything out from the bottom and your roots are going to grow down and it's going to be too hot for them. Um, some people are into bottom watering of a flat. I don't like doing that. Uh, I'll water on top. And when this kind of soil turns this color, when it's wet, it's dark. When it starts getting this color, you know, it's time to water it. And when you water, I basically use warm water, not hot water, not ice cold water out of the faucet. If you have a water softener, be careful if you're using softened water. Why? So salt, salt in it. And plants don't like that. Same thing. Um, I was going to say, you can go to the box stores and you will see companies fertilize that there's fertilizer in here. Don't waste your money on that. You water twice and it's leached all the fertilizer out. And you got to fertilize again anyhow. So don't waste your money paying double where it says fertilizer and all in your soil list mix. You know, don't, you know, after you do this several years, you'll get creative and find out, hey, I don't have to do all of that. I, I need, need to, you know, do this or that. So, questions? So you're starting on the little pots and then moving into the big pots? No, I start them in a big flat. Okay, right. That's what I start. Oh, and flat. transplanting. Um, time to transplant. They got to have their uh, first natural leaf or good leaf, the germination leaf, that's too soon. When they start getting, I would say, the third and fourth leaf, you know, if they're getting too tall, it's a big transplant. Okay. And a lot of times, um, tell people tomatoes, when we transplant tomatoes, 
we would put them in a big flat, we would pull them out, strip the roots off, and put them all the way down right up to their leaves. And people go, you can't rip all those roots off. <laughs> yeah, most certainly. You know, what is that doing? It stimulates the plant to put more roots out. And that whole stem, if you plant it deep, will be all roots in there. That's why if you have a real tall spindly tomato plant, dig a trench and put the thing in a trench or dig a deep hole. You know, when, like I talked about last week, our first garden we had across the highway and we watered when we first started it and never got watered again, except for mother nature's watering. Um, and yeah, we filled the hole with water in with our old clay soil around here, you, it has a lot of, you know, moisture retention in the soil. So, um, but yeah, we plant and then um, a lot of times I plant into those little six packs. That's what I didn't bring along. Uh, I have a, you can buy those sheets also. Uh, very similar to those peat pots. You can, <laughs> You know, but they're plastic and they come in sixes or fours or you can get some that are deeper. You're starting to find that a lot of them have a deeper um, plant or a deeper container to them than the old ones that were about that deep um, because you get a lot more root system growing. And, but again, um, you will find that they used to be six packs and then they've gone to four packs. Um, you know, with plants, some of them are even three packs where you'll have a section and there will only be three plants. So when you, if you're buying plants, go shopping and look for that. Um, uh, we, you know, Master Gardeners, we have a plant sale every year and Mother's Day weekend at the fairgrounds. And we usually have every kind of <coughs> flower imaginable, right, Joan? Mm -hmm. I think we have vegetables from tomatoes to broccoli, cauliflower, uh, some herbs, excuse me, petunias, geraniums, flowering plants. If you don't want to plant, you know, Come up there, we'll take care of your Mother's Day weekend um, because we're at ordering yeah, that stuff good. right now. And we get it from a greenhouse at um, Batavia, uh, Wisconsin, south of Plymouth, is the greenhouse we've dealt with for, I don't know, ever since we've been doing plant sales, I think. Uh, um, so, and they've been always real good to us. So, other questions about, go ahead. How do you hang your grow lights? Like, what do you use to hang them from? Well, you got to have some kind of, you know, uh, what I did in one of our little rooms. I took some of my, when, when we had our store, I just had, like, you know, hooks up in the ceiling that I could hang them from. Well, now I had to get creative, and I got a table, and I just built a little stand, you know, where I could put two of them on, and just, and you got to kind of, you know, hook them in, and whatever, that's kind of what you got to do. So what I do, I do the shop lights, Yeah. and I bought the S-hooks. Mm -hmm. And then I bought one of the metal racks sure. and I hang them and then I just lift them as they grow. Yep. yep. And then instead of buying that terrarium that you were talking about, that greenhouse, mini greenhouse, yep. I just buy the roll of plastic uh, oh, yeah. painters yes. plastic oh, or whatever, sure. and then I just put that over the top mm -hmm. yep. and then the lights help hold heat in. When, when we planted a lot of plants, I never use those little plastic domes. They're, they run about $2 uh, for a dome. And I just use plain old plastic. Um, Wait, you know, so buy, buy a roll of plastic and cut it to fit the top. And when your plants are up, you know, take it off, you know. 
um, yeah, it, you know, like, like I said, be creative. Crawl out of your waterbed and use that as your germination. Uh, sleep on the floor. Well, and, this is during the day at night, you put them on the floor. Yeah, <laughs> well, sure. When you gotta, when you got to start getting them uh, acclimated to the outside. When we first did the, the, our greenhouse, when I worked for the county, um, I would slide our plants out of the basement window into a planter box that I had just built with um, particle board and some old house windows that you can find in, you know, like I said, be creative, you know, that was a very easy, you know, way and we built a different, you know, a bigger greenhouse and, uh, but yeah, like, uh, starting your plants, some people, you know, are harvesting. My niece down in West Bend, she's uh, harvesting her lettuce already because she planted it in. Um, I'm thinking the word the uh, hot box. Hot box, yeah. Thank you. In the hot box, and uh, sure, and you can do that. Um, Master Gardeners are going to be sponsoring a professor from Canada, uh, Dr. Lee Wright, and they're going to be doing uh, a seminar on April 25th on weedless gardening. And, um, you know, I'll try and get together the sign in i'm not supposed to give that to you but i'm going to because we're we can have up to 500 people attend it so if you would be interested it's on april 25th from six until eight at night and he's a well-known author he trained his um college his bachelor degree and uh, masters was at madison and then I think he got his uh, doctorate at Cornell, and now he's uh, a professor uh, up in Canada. Mm -hmm. And I listened to a seminar that he did on small fruit a couple weeks ago, uh, the uncommon ones, not raspberries or strawberries, but gooseberries. Honeyberries, <laughs> currants, things like that, and talked about different varieties. Um, you know, and he's a very interesting, <laughs> very interesting gentleman. Um, very, uh, very soft spoken, uh, but you can understand him. He's very knowledgeable, and um, it's always uh, fun when you see him. And if uh, you have not, don't be afraid to go on Facebook and look for different uh, classes. Uh, Ramsey County in Minnesota, that's from Minneapolis, Ramsey County Master Gardeners. They do a lot of different classes um, and you can just sign on and you get the link and you can watch it. Um, Facebook and YouTube, just like, you know, this is, you know, streamed on YouTube, but a lot of people are doing education that way instead of having to go and, um, you know, attend or drive someplace. So don't be afraid to look, um, you know, on Facebook and, you know, put in, you know, plant uh, whatever you're looking for, and it'll be unbelievable of what you come up with. So if I didn't start my seeds, is it too late? No. No, 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 not at all. It depends what you're going to start. It's too late to start geraniums. Um, you know, they got to be started like in December. I don't do flowers, just vegetables. Just if I can't eat it, I won't. Okay. <laughs> One of those, uh, you, know, you better watch out. She wants to I, it, flowers. I, it's pointless, flowers. <laughs> you can't eat it. Sure you sure can. You can. <laughs> yes, you can. I'm not going to eat a geranium. Not, not a geranium. <laughs> Excursions you can so eat. Cool. And there's lots it's of things right. you I can know, eat. But the flowers attract the pollinators. Yeah. 
yeah, I was to live around those people that do the flowers. I don't need anything. Yeah, well, then. Yeah. Okay, so I can start my, I can still start peppers right now, even though people I know start peppers and they have plants like yeah. that look like they. Yeah, no, don't, you know, because peppers, you shouldn't really plant until our last frost is said goodbye to us. Also, if you plant peppers and they blossom and their nighttime temperatures go down below 50, they abort their blossom and anyhow. So, yeah, still, you know. So still get them in. Sure, still plant them. Don't be afraid to do that. And kind of, then next year you'll know, well, I should have started them two weeks earlier or I should have started this two weeks later because they got too far ahead. There is an old saying, you're supposed to plant peas and spinach on Good Friday. And potatoes. And potatoes? Well, not, yes. Oh, yeah. oh my mother, my mother always, she was, yeah. She swore by that. It could be yucky out and she had to be out ripping around in her <laughs> garden and uh, <laughs> planting potatoes or whatever. Yes. So we know it was Memorial Day in and Labor Day out for the it, Yes, <laughs> yes. Memorial Day in. I never plant anything until after yeah. Memorial Day. When we have our greenhouse, <clears throat> people would come. Well, we want to buy stuff in the middle of May. And I said, it's too early. And I said, I'll gladly sell it to you. You will be back. And I said, you can fill my pocket the second time around. You know, I'll gladly take your money. But uh, yes, uh, that's a big mistake. A lot of times we uh, plant way too early. Uh, we don't get our plants acclimated to the outside. People will go to a greenhouse, buy their plants, and take them and plant them out. Well, they're not adjusted to the outside temperatures or the sunlight or anything. What's going to happen to your plant? They're going to get scorched. A lot of times people would come back and say, well, my leaves all turn brownish. And I said, well, did you get them used to being outside? Oh, we got to do that. And I said, you know, it's no different than when it gets warm in summer that you take your clothes off and you go sunbathing. Well, what's going to happen to you? You're no different than uh, what a plant is. You know, it's, you got to get used to that. How do you do that? What's the procedure? Well, when, how do you know it? Put them out, but don't put them out in the bright sun. When you first start it, put them on the north side of the house or where it's shady. Get used to that outside temperature where it's a little breezy. And then little by little, get them exposed to the sun. So you leave them out all day or you take yeah, them Yeah, sure you can out? as long as you're protected. When we had our greenhouse many years ago, we had a snowstorm May 10th. And we got six inches of snow. And I told Judy, we better move these plants in. And she said, no, it's not. It's only supposed to rain. Well, we had them on a baler wagon. Well, I got up the next morning, you know, four, six inches of snow on top of all these petunias, marigolds, and everything sitting outside. And, um, you know, yeah. yeah. Be, be kind of careful. You got to kind of play around with that. So they kill them? No, no, just, no. I got up and we got the water hose out and hosed them off. And, um, you know, the next night it was freezing. You know, it dropped, the temperatures dropped. And, you know, you got to be careful of that. That's why a lot of times when you can plant, like your peppers, gallon milk jug. Don't be afraid to put that around your peppers your tomatoes or whatever, and but don't leave the cover on top because it'll get so hot in there and you'll scorch them to death. Um, so yeah, a little easy way of you know getting them used, but move them in and out. It's a little work, and if you do a lot of them, don't be afraid to put it on a little wagon and. 
you know, pull them out and little by little move them out to, you know, where they're going to be more exposed to the sunlight. When we get our plants in for the city flower bed and from the greenhouse, and they're usually sitting in my front yard, and I usually have them right under our carport to begin with, and then gradually move them out so they're in the sun and they get acclimated before we plant them in the flower bed. Just two tips of advice. When you start hardening them off, don't put them out in the middle of the heat of the day. Yeah, it's usually right. either earlier or later. Yep. Yes. And then also you want some wind, but if it's more than five or nine yep. miles per hour, it's going to whip them. Yep. Yep. So as you harden them off, like not too much of a breeze or yep. nothing at first. Right. And then right. That's why I would like to put them on like on the east side of the house or the north side of the house where it doesn't get a lot of hot or sun. Or you can use a fan. You can use oh, a fan yeah. The a fan. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, that's... Uh, and you're hardening for a week, two weeks? Yeah, a week, a week and a half. You know, it depends on each... It depends what our weather conditions are mm -hmm. as to how much you got them hardened or you have to harden them off. When we had a bigger garden, we always put containers around them once we even planted them. Uh, years ago, you used to get the the paper plastic coated milk cartons. And uh, we always put that around in uh, all the plants. Well, I cut the bottom of ice cream cakes. Oh yeah, Seven sure, pounds. sure. And yes. just pop them off. After I don't eat that much ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> I <used> to. <laughs> yeah, tails are getting brittle now. <laughs> yeah, yes, yeah. yeah. And you know, the other thing is, Little nursery containers, if there's um, nursery containers, sometimes you'll see people getting rid of them, cut the bottom out of them, they're black, um, and it, it's they're fine for, you know, putting around plants. Also, the bakeries that do frosting, they have their frosting pails. Oh, Sometimes okay. they're giving them away or dollar pail or something. I'm too lazy to pay for stuff. You'd rather eat ice cream? You'd rather eat ice cream? No, my wife doesn't let me buy ice cream pails anymore. <laughs> so, anything else? Any other good tidbits or questions or, you know, whatever with, with vegetables or flowers? Same thing with flowers. You got to harden them all. Um, When's the bus trip down to the Amish greenhouses and Young's down in Randolph? When yeah. are you coordinating that? No, uh-uh. <laughs> no, no. I don't know when, never even heard about it. No, you're putting it together. No. Uh-uh. <laughs> nope, nope, nope. I haven't been into doing bus trips. Last time I did one, I went skating down. You were along, weren't you? When I went skating down the aisle when he had to hit the brakes in Chicago, and I had the coffee pot in my hand, and down the middle aisle I went. So, yeah. it's been a while. Yes, it's been a while. Do you have any red as far as using your own soil? Or I don't recommend it. Um, years ago, when we first we used to sterilize yeah. our soil. We mm -hmm. baked it in the oven, right? Mm -hmm. And it would stink so bad. Thank you much, Doc. Uh, it, you know, it would smell, and it conceivably is it worth doing that? Uh, well, we kind of mixed some of our soil with the potting yes, soil, that you especially if you really want to replant them. them. Yeah, yeah, right. So, Sure, you can. I got an oven in a barn, so I can do it yeah. out there. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. sure. Yes. <coughs> yeah, that, I don't, you know, I'm not a big lover of doing that. Like I said, years ago, we used to do that. There's a, too much 
soil borne bacteria in, you know, if you have something and your tomatoes got, um, you know, blight the year before, well, are you picking it up and doing the same thing again, uh, you know, this next year? That's hard to say. So, even reusing your pots, you got your flowers and bleach them. Yes. Just yes. like I said, with these things, you know, it's it's best to re-sterilize because you don't know what was in those pots and, you know, what happened. That's why peat pots, you tear them off and you go throw them away. Take care. Um, okay, anything else? Well, thank you, Byron. This has been very informative. Appreciate you taking the time to yeah. Well, put this together um, for us. next week I, or next time oh, we're talking good. about raised beds. Good. And I think that's what's on the schedule. And um, I won't have a a show and tell <laughs> oh, um, <yeah>. like we <laughs> did this week. Uh, but this I felt we had to do this. Um, you know, and it's much easier to see um, if what you're talking about if you have all this stuff oh, sure. here. Yeah. Well, thanks again. Oh, yes. Thank you all for coming. Um, it's always fun. I'm glad we have a wild group that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>